welcome to Tech Talk, to the People and Planet podcast. Today, I'm joined by founder and CEO of climate tech startup Undo, uh, Jim Mann. Jim, hi, how's it going? Hi, how are you? I'm well, it's good, thank you. Um, Jim, so um, Undo is tackling the problem of climate change uh, by reducing the amount of carbon in the atmosphere enhanced weathering. Um, right. Yeah. So, so can you expand on on, on that for our listeners and, and maybe tell us a little bit more about the mission and you know how that's benefiting planet? Yeah. So um, we we need to remove CO two from the atmosphere. So we we've at the moment um, put too much out there, and we are reducing our CO two. And you know, countries like the UK are doing quite well at reducing our our carbon emissions but we're not doing it fast enough. And um, as a consequence, we're going to need to actually absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. So that's what we're, we're trying to do. The enhanced drop weathering process speeds up the, nat- the natural weathering cycle, which is what has balanced our climate for, for millennia on, on, on the earth. And uh, what we do is take rock, we take it as a fine powder and we spread it on agricultural land. That increases the rate of enhanced drop weathering. Uh, sorry, enhan- increases the rate of wet rock weathering by about 50,000 times. So this really? has then a meaningful impact on climate change. Yeah, it's a huge, huge multiplier effect um, that, we're, that we're, we're putting onto that process. So so just in, in terms of layman's terms, it's that's all you use, isn't it? So it's be, be specific in terms of the rock. Um, yes. And it needs to be super fine granules of basalt. Is that the, the way you describe so, it? More like a sand. So if you can think of it as sort of yeah. sand um, that we put onto the field. And yes, we need a specific type of, of rock. It's one of the most abundant materials in the Earth's surface. So that's that's good news for us. And we can often find it already at a fine at a fine sand um, as a byproduct of things like the aggregate industry, where they're, they're smashing up rocks to, to use for building roads or, or going into concrete or, or, right. or buildings. Um, and we take the the dust that comes off those rocks as they make the gravel. So it's almost like the byproduct of what they're actually using the basalt for. You're using it as as you know your core, I guess, material. Um, exactly. So, yes. Yeah, so, so you spread it on the fields, and and some sort of reaction happens. Yeah, it's a, a chemical reaction. So I'll, I promise I won't go too deep on the, yeah, deep yeah, on yeah. the chemistry. <laughs> Um, but you've got an acid-base reaction. So your, your your rock is a is an alkali. You've got carbon dioxide in the atmosphere mixing with water. That forms a weak carbonic acid. And it literally is that carbonic acid reacting with the rock. And you've got two things that happen. You get bicarbonate ions, which is a permanent store of CO2. That washes into the into our groundwater and eventually will make its way to the oceans. But the, the other bit of this that's really important is the is the cations. Now, cations you and I would think of as fertilizer. So this is um, things like phosphate, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and a whole range of micronutrients are released from that mineral, the minerals in the rock, they get released for plants to use. So you're reducing the need for fertilizer, you're having an alkali effect. So you're actually reducing the need for lime. Farmers put a lot of lime on fields to raise the pH for better growing conditions. So you need less lime and less fertilizer. So there's actually, as well as absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere, there's a reduction in emissions on the farm. And, and and presumably that would help crop yield as well, right? It does, yes. Um and, and I can I can say a little bit. There's a paper about to come out, and I can't, I'm not supposed to say things about too much about papers until they're they're actually published. And um, we have a paper that we worked with um Newcastle University on looking at crop yield um in UK crops and it's a very significant increase. It's it's a double digit percentage increase, which is really significant for for farmers. And if you think about you know farmers are struggling, everyone knows that. Um but we're I'm also thinking, you know, off the top of my head about things like inflation because of having to import a lot of crops. Um yeah. things like that. So perhaps you know there's all sorts of multifaceted benefits to this, I suppose. Um, lots, lots of benefits, particularly on the farm where they need less inputs, so they've got yeah. cost savings, but then also are getting a bigger yield with doing no ex- no extra work. So it can make a big difference to a farmer. And the farms are at least the, the, the agriculture industry that actually buys this. The, the buys this, sorry, did you say? Yes. Yeah, no, no, no. We actually give them the material for free. 
Right. We take it to the farm. We give them the material for free. And what we do is we we generate carbon credits off the back of it, which we sell on to people like Microsoft, who are a customer, Stripe, um, some of the big engineering companies. Um, so organizations that want to want to cancel out their carbon footprint. Really? OK. So, so for the farmers, it's completely no brainer. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, for, for the benefit of our listeners who aren't perhaps uh, as climate savvy, why, why do we need to take carbon out of the atmosphere? Because we've, we've put too much there. <laughs> so so basically, we almost everything we do is emitting carbon into the atmosphere. And carbon dioxide is um, one of the, it's the key driver to, to, to global warming or climate change. And what we... What we're doing at the moment as a as a as a species is reducing the amount of carbon we emit every year, and we're doing quite a decent job of of that in in most developed countries, um, and and starting to plateau that that carbon that we that we're emitting. But until we get down to a point where we're not emitting any, so net zero position, the temperature of the Earth will keep warming. We need to remove some of that CO two that we've already got up there because. Even in a best case scenario, we don't have the technology to stop emission, emitting completely. So they often talk about hard to decarbonize sectors, things like producing steel, which we all like steel. You know, steel's yeah. still great. It, it yeah. builds the world that we need around us. Concrete's another one. Um, so some of these 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 areas are just really hard to, to not do without fossil fuels. Um, and we want because it's a lifestyle that we that we've become accustomed to. Um, we, we will need to do negative emissions so carbon removal to offset the emissions that we're putting out there. So basically suck that carbon that's, that's oh. going into the atmosphere in those processes back out again. Understood. Um, so this process that, that you guys are doing is, is very data driven, it's very technology driven. Can you kind of share a bit of a high level overview of why that is important? Yeah, so so the, the, the real benefit of using open system um, carbon dioxide removal is that it's extremely scalable and you can you can you know all of our stuff is uses existing infrastructure you can scale it really quick but the downside of an open system is it's really hard to measure everything that we want to measure that proves that we're removing that carbon dioxide is yeah. leaving the system so you're trying to measure it as it passes through mm -hmm. the system so we have to do an awful lot of science and then all of that data we have to store we have to manipulate that data. We have to do big modeling exercises and things to calculate how, how much carbon dioxide any given rock sample is able to remove. And we have to store that all somewhere and have an audit trail. Because otherwise, if we can't audit this, if we can't prove that we've taken that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, we can't sell it to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so as I said before, I mean, it sounds like a little bit of a, a, a no-brainer, certainly to the agriculture. But and, and I know that you guys have, have had some really good growth in your first sort of 12, 12 months of business. But what about the, any challenges or limitations have you faced or can you uh, predict this process? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it's been, the science has been hard. Um, we've got a fantastic science team doing some amazing work. Um, I think anything where you try and scale it quickly, you know, we're, we're putting down 20,000 tons of of basalt now every every month um so nearly a thousand thousand tons a day of basalt hitting the ground that's a pretty significant undertaking um and to get there from a standing start like a year ago is is is, is you know testament yeah. to the to the team um they've done a, an amazing job of, of operationalizing this um and and we sort of try to think really big about this and, and we always sort of go back to how can we remove a billion tons of co2 from the atmosphere by by 2030 and when you're thinking at that scale you're also always redesigning your processes because you yeah. you can get you can test something you can get it working it's like but then does it scale so we're always thinking in scale systems and again coming back to the technology your technology platform has to be able to scale to that sort of level you yeah. know, a huge amount of data a huge amount of storage behind it and a huge amount of processing as you as you scale this up yeah, it makes sense. Um, okay, I know that you you mentioned there's bits and pieces that you can't mention that are coming out, but can you share anything that's exciting, any developments that you can uh, share for this year? 
So um, and there's, there's things that, that, we, that we've had recently, things like um, we've raised a significant investment round um, yeah. that, um, by one of the top US climate VCs, lower carbon capital. So um, it's quite rare that you get you know, top tier uh, Silicon Valley venture capitalists investing in, in little UK startups. So that's, that's quite yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, significant sort of 12, 12 million dollar investment to, to get us growing to what, to where we are today and to help us through, through this phase of growth. Um, some of our customers are pretty impressive. We sold to Microsoft recently. So getting, you know, biggest company in the world to buy from you and um, seven months of due diligence around the technology and things. Um, and they're a great company. I mean, they're, they're one of the, the, the companies that not only are they committed to getting to net zero, but they're going to offset all of their historic emissions and they're doing it with high quality removals, really, really strong mission behind their climate agenda. And they have a science team and publish reports on what they're doing. They're a really good example of, of people in space as were our first customer, which was Stripe, the card processing company. Yeah. Um, again, they've had a huge influence on, on our growth and also on the growth of carbon dioxide removal more, more widely. Okay. Wow. Um, so hopefully, you, you know, that's, that's a, good, like you say, a good example for other companies to follow suit. If you get in those sorts of high profile firms that are, are really going for it on the carbon removals, offset it. Um, that's a knock-on effect for other companies to come as well. Um, which kind of leads on to the to the, the next and final question, Jim. Um, are we are we doing enough on this whole climate change against thing as a as a as a world? What's your take on the whole general? Hell no, nowhere near, nowhere. Uh -huh. near. Um, we have we have, and, and I don't think people always appreciate this. Um, we have an absolute mountain to climb here. Um, I mean, the, the good news is, and you know, we 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 are one of our company values is to be is to have a positive outlook on these things. But but there is real good news as well, which is that we do have the tools. We have we have everything we need to do this. Um, we need to just be more committed to it. Get the political will, really drive the politicians to to put the regulation in that we need. And, and we're seeing some great regulation at the moment. The the cross-border adjustment mechanism in the EU, which taxes carbon as it moves in and out of the EU, means that you can then start actually taxing within the EU without a cheap polluting steel, yeah. for example, being shipped across the border. You can, you, you've can you got a mechanism to, to level the playing field, which means you can then actually tax the carbon emissions that are happening in the EU. Then the EU can hit its Paris Agreement targets. So we're seeing some really great stuff happening. The IRA bill, uh, in, Inflation Reduction um, act in, in the US, which has put a huge money, amount of money behind some of these technologies. It doesn't doesn't benefit us directly, but as a you know, some of the other carbon removal technologies, it's a huge benefit. So th there's great stuff happening, but we are not doing anywhere near enough today. No. Well, let's hope that we can uh, up our game a little bit. <laughs> Jim, it's been great we speaking to you. Thank you. Great to meet you too. And guys, if you've enjoyed Jim's content, please make sure to give us uh, a like, uh, a comment, a share. And this has been Tech Talks, the People and Planet. Jim, thanks again.